Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. This is gonna be a very important video to you if you are just starting out with machine learning or you have some knowledge of ML but don't know what to learn next and you are feeling kinda lost or you are a working professional who wants to pivot their career toward machine learning. Don't worry, this is not a promotional video where I will try to sell my course at the end. Consider this video as a piece of advice to my younger self if he would start learning machine learning in 2021. With that being said, let's start. Before jumping into the roadmap to machine learning, let me say a big thank you. We have just crossed 5000 subscribers. And recently I have started a discord server. There you can ask your questions, share video ideas and of course memes. So please join, the link is in the description. Ok, back to the topic. Let's start by understanding what machine learning really is. Famous computer scientist Arthur Samuel put it this way. It is a field of study that gives computers the capability to learn without being explicitly programmed. To understand this, we need to be able to distinguish between traditional programming and machine learning. In traditional programming, we give our program two things, data and some rules or parameters. I have written test data because we judge our program's correctness based on the result of this input data. Suppose you are writing a program to check if a year is a leap year. The if else statements in that program can be treated as rules. In another scenario, if a program checks if an image has a predetermined aspect ratio, then we can treat that aspect ratio as the parameter. The point is, we are hard coding the rules or parameters into our program and the program produces the outputs based on that. Now let's look at a machine learning program. Here we input two kinds of data. The training data is for learning and the test data is to judge the correctness of the program. Note that we don't hard code the rules, rather we let our program learn those rules or parameters by itself from the training data, aka previous experience. And that is the reason why it's called learning. In other words, in our traditional programming, we tell our program how to do a task, while in machine learning, we tell our program what the task is and it finds how to do it by itself. As far as the application of machine learning is concerned, I don't think I need to tell you that. It's literally everywhere and you have heard of them many many times. Let's move on. Now I'm gonna tell you what it really means to learn machine learning. What are the building blocks of ML? Well, most people will tell you machine learning algorithms. But that's not the whole picture. Not even half of it. You will need programming, mathematics, and last but not the least, data handling skills. Only when you have a firm grip on all of these, you can say, you know machine learning. Let me describe them one by one and how one might learn them. Let's start with mathematics and I'm gonna be brutally honest to you. If somebody says you can learn machine learning without mathematics, then they are not teaching ML. They are just trying to sell their course. You will need the knowledge of three topics in math, linear algebra, statistics and calculus. Linear algebra deals with vectors and matrices. This is how we represent and manipulate our data. I have divided the subtopics into three levels and it's a good idea to learn them in this order. Coming to statistics, it helps us to get insights from the data and it's the backbone behind many ML algorithms. As a matter of fact, many ML algorithms are direct extensions of statistical learning. At last, the horror of many people, calculus. We need this mostly in optimization because at the end of the day, every machine learning problem boils down to maximizing or minimizing a function. If you show this screen to a math undergrad, they will say you need two to three years to learn everything. But luckily, you don't need to spend that much of time. You are not studying for a test. You are learning this to prepare yourself for what is to come later. So focus more on intuitions than complicated sums. This is especially true for calculus. Another good news is, once you are done with the basics, 
You can pick up the medium and advanced math concepts while learning the ML algorithms. This will greatly reduce your learning time. Now let's talk about programming. Well, even in 2021, I would suggest you to start with Python. Of course, there are other languages like Java, R, Julia, Go, but to be honest, none of them could beat the snake yet. Again, I have divided the stuff you learn in programming into three levels. First, you learn things like variables, loops, simple data structures, algorithms, etc. Then you should learn object-oriented programming. I know many people ignore this, but trust me, as you will move toward complicated projects, OOP will be inevitable. At this stage, you should also start learning about important Python libraries like NumPy, Scikit-learn, Keras, etc. At the final stage, I would recommend you to learn and implement graph and tree data structures. Why? because many ML models are implemented using these. Now I'm gonna tell you some tools that will help you in your coding journey. The first one is Google. Yeah, searching is a very important skill for programmers. You should learn how to use the keywords that will land you on the correct pages. Then comes Stack Overflow. No matter what I say about its importance, it would be an understatement. 90% of the time, you will find that somebody else has already faced the problem that you are facing right now and you will get the solution. After that comes GitHub. It's a great place to share and organize your works. You will also learn a lot from other people's repositories. Here's a tip. Use Anaconda for Python coding. It will help you manage your virtual environments and install libraries. Unfortunately, I realized it much later. Okay, so two pillars are done. Comes now the most interesting part, machine learning algorithms. Broadly speaking, there are three types of machine learning algorithms, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. The first one is mainly used to solve regression and classification problems. Unsupervised learning deals with clustering, association, and dimensionality reduction. And the reinforcement learning is used in decision making, game AI, etc. Now there exist hundreds of algorithms and thousands of their variations to solve these tasks. Obviously, nobody can master them all. At some point, you have to choose a specific path. And you will be able to make that decision by following your interest and the real world problem that you are trying to solve. But to get to that point, you must complete the previous levels. Let me show you. In level 1, you should learn gradient descent, linear regression, logistic regression, etc. Remember, here you will come across concepts like optimization, cost function, sigmoid function, regularization that are very essential in machine learning. So pay attention please. In the next level, you will learn algorithms like nearest neighbors, k-means, knife base, etc. Then you should go for neural networks, SVMs, decision trees, random forest, etc. After completing these three levels, you will have a lot of options to choose from. You can learn advanced tree-based algorithms like XGBoost or neural network-based things like CNNs, RNNs or reinforcement learning algorithms and so on. Well, I personally would choose CNNs. Probably I should put a disclaimer here that everything that I'm saying in this video is completely my opinion. Obviously, this is not the only way to learn machine learning. There are other ways that you can follow. Okay, here comes the last one, data handling. As they say, data is the fuel for machine learning. And we are producing quintillions bytes of data every single day. But that doesn't mean we can use them easily. In fact, often you will find situations like this. Unless you know how to handle your data properly. Again, I have divided this into three parts. First comes data collection. For learning purpose, Kaggle, UCI repository are great ways to get your datasets. But when you will be working with some complicated and very specific kinds of problems, then probably you will need web scraping and official APIs and other websites if you want. The second part is data storage and retrieval. This is specially applicable for large datasets. You will need to learn about database management systems, SQL, etc. for this portion. You can skip this portion at the beginning and learn it a bit later. At least I did that. The third portion is data preprocessing. Here, we clean our data, try to understand it by visualizations, remove unnecessary data, fill missing values, and so on. 
Only after doing these things can we feed the data to our machine learning model. Wow. Yes, I was amazed too when I first learned that we have to take care of our data so much. So this was the big picture of machine learning. Here are some suggestions that I think will help you in your ML journey. List all the things that you already know. This will boost your confidence and will save some time by avoiding relearning. Code what you are learning in linear algebra and statistics. This will sharpen your coding skills and the concepts will be more clear to you. If you are at the intermediate stage, then participating in competitions is a great way to keep yourself motivated and learn from others. Plus, you can win some prizes too. This one is really important. Always implement what you are learning in theory. After all, you are learning ML to solve real world problems, right? Lastly, please don't fall in the course loop. I have talked about it in another video too. The point is, some courses are a great way to start, but please do not keep doing courses after courses without doing any big project. No course will teach you everything that I have mentioned because it takes a lot of time. You will need to read books, blogs, watch videos, and constantly update your knowledge. Remember, you don't need to be a master to start working on a project. Just make sure you keep learning new things that are important for your project. So that was everything I had for today. If you found value in this video, please subscribe and share this video because there are a lot of people who are looking for a proper roadmap to machine learning. Stay safe and thanks for watching. Thank you.